We are currently embroiled in a small skirmish just outside Zalaniv because we are assisting, I believe it is Igor, in defeating a whole band of looters. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, what's Igor doing here, you know? Because obviously, generally, he has a very small army. He only has about, you know, 10 to 15 units. Well, he's actually been doing some really nice recruiting. And he now has about 38. So that's really, really nice. I have been told, however, in the comments that your generals and your companions that are running around with their own, with their own armies, they can be given troops. Now, unfortunately, I don't think that particular functionality is open to me at the moment because I have a save from a couple of versions back and this save probably is not compatible with that particular function or feature and as a result I'm not able to give my generals troops even though that would make everything so much easier you know basically I wouldn't have to rely then on faction money and I could instead rely on my own cash reserves and that would make things much much easier indeed unfortunately that is not going to be the case at least for the moment until I have a inevitable restart of some kind. You know, you never know when I'm going to be, you know, restarting, dependent on if there is a, you know, uh, update that is completely save game incompatible, something along those lines. It's probably going to happen at some point. And uh, I should let you know, by the way, that I have 12 in marksmanship now. So that means that I will be able to utilize that sniper rifle. I haven't bought it yet because I've been recruiting a whole bunch of people for garrisons and things, and it is making it slightly difficult to be able to afford such a, well, such an expensive weapon. It is extremely expensive, and that's definitely something that I'm a bit worried about in general. I don't really want to spend such a huge amount of money on one weapon when I don't have that much. Anyway, and you may be thinking, well, how, how, how do you, how don't you have any money? Because you, you had like, uh, you know, 300,000 or something along those lines. And yes, I did have 300,000. However, that goes very quickly when you are attempting to replenish your own ranks. So in other words, I obviously did recruit a whole new squad of units, FCA Grenadiers and VFA Fighters. They're very expensive. VFA Fighters are 23,000 each and FCA Grenadiers are 44,000 each. So you can kind of imagine how expensive and costly that expenditure actually is. So yeah, that's the, that's where my 300,000 went. And also obviously the fact that I have been selling my armor as well. I've been selling the the various loot that I've gotten, and I have been doing a couple of battles off screen too of, well, basically things that you don't really need to worry about because these things are literally easy, easy battles. And I'm talking about easy battles here. Like I'm talking about looters attempting to take Mern and attempting to take uh, Zinkov as well. But most of the time, that's absolutely fine. I actually did manage to get to Lipno, by the way, because obviously you remember that Lipno was under siege at the end of the previous episode, and I did manage to get there, but not in time. I basically managed to get there eh, about maybe a minute or two too late, and the mountain bandits were able to take over the town, which is actually a really awesome ability for them to be able to do because I know that in Mountain Blade for example if you even have a mod that enables the functionality for a bandit faction or a looter faction or a, you know a faction that isn't generally you know well known to take thieves and indeed castles and towns and so on and so forth if if you have that in a mod, because it doesn't doesn't actually happen in native. Only the main factions can take things in native, you know. So if you have, see a band of, I don't know, mountain bandits in Mountain Blade, they're not going to be able to actually take anything, you know. They're, they're not actually going to be dangerous in that respect. So you really don't even have to worry about them at all. Whereas in this game, mountain bandits, looters, and, uh, well, basically anything else that you can name, you know, Cossack rebels and things like that, they can all capture your towns. 
which I think is fantastic. I love that. So developers, don't change it. It's fantastic. It's a really great feature, in my opinion, even though maybe the uh, <laughs> maybe the frequency of the sieges could be reduced. But I think the main reason why that is actually happening right now is due to my inadequate garrisons. That's basically the only thing that I can really think of why they would be attacking me so incredibly much. Because, I mean, let's face it, you, w wouldn't you do the same thing? You know, if you were in the same situation as a bandit party where you could bring a whole bunch of your friends along and then you would be able to, you know, siege a town that only has a garrison of 10 or 20, then yeah, that's pretty easy, you know? That's pretty easy. So nothing really to worry about there. I think in general, the ability for the looters and things to be able to take towns is great. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens. So as you can see, I put another 7 in Zinkov's garrison. I uh, put 26 into Merns right there. And also, obviously we have Lipno. I did have a much greater garrison in there, but I've just put 14 in there with a whole bunch of militia snipers and militia in general. And uh, hopefully that's going to be enough to be able to keep people away. Now, I would like to take care of this looter camp, so I suppose I am actually going to do that. Wow, there's actually a whole bunch of them in here because we've got you know a lot of uh, a lot of reinforcements coming in too. But yeah, anyway, I've actually gotten a new squad here. I've called it Dune because that's kind of uh, it's kind of a sandy planet, isn't it? Kind of almost yeah, sort of thing. Anyway, I'm going to be uh, putting them actually into the battle here. And by by the way, please keep suggesting names if you would like to. You don't have to because obviously we did have a name suggestion episode. Uh, a couple of parts ago, so I'm, I just refer back to that if there is a name that I'd like to take from it, and uh, yeah, but anyway, just just know that I read every single comment, so obviously, you know, I have everything in mind, it's just that sometimes I think, ah, oh, this name, this name kind of pops out at me, that's, that's what I'm going to use, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, let's see if I can do something here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm literally just going to charge straight up. There you go. I'm just going to charge straight up at them, see what we can do. Now, here's I think a bit of a problem. I did go to a black market to try and buy one of those uh, one of those very powerful sniper rifles. I, I believe it is an SR SR two hundred or whatever it's called. I can't remember the name of it now, but it's an SR something. And basically, that weapon cost forty seven thousand. But unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to find it in the black market that I went to. So I'm hopeful that the next one that I go to will actually have the weapon available and then we will be able to acquire it for ourselves because I know that a lot of you have been wanting me to use a sniper rifle and yeah, that's perfectly acceptable. I'm perfectly, you know, perfectly fine to do, to do that, you know, because we've obviously leveled up our marksmanship. I have leveled up enough to be able to get a suitable rifle proficiency. I actually have 98 in rifle proficiency now. And I am no longer going to be specking into marksmanship, I believe, because, let's face it, if I can shoot like that against a looter and kill him almost immediately with an assault rifle from this range, as you can see, we got, we got another hit on that guy over there. I think our marksmanship is perfectly fine. Look at that. There's a headshot as well. We're basically, yeah, look at that. And I'm now level 23. Yes, we've been doing so many siege defenses and things that leveling up is literally just a foregone conclusion, really. There's nothing nothing you can do about it, you know? You'd, you're going to have to defend at some point, and defending is always going to give you much more experience than getting actual kills, which I very much like as well. I like that particular feature in Freeman, because I know that in Mount and Blade, for example, yes, you do get some, you know, you do get some passive experience here and there, but it's not that much. Sometimes you do get quite a bit, but it's not that much in the grand scheme of things, and you don't tend to level up that fast as a result of passive experience from battles. And look at how crazy fast we completed this looter camp. It happened so quickly that none of the looters' reinforcements actually even entered the battle, which I think is really quite fantastic. I like that feature as well. I like the fact that you can circumvent some of the some of the little, uh, I don't know, some of the little sort of, um, hmm, 
uh, sub features, I guess, like the reinforcement kind of thing. You can kind of subvert it by being quick enough to be able to get these guys dead, the, the main force that is, and then you can actually destroy the looter camp that easily. It's really great. I like that a lot. Anyway, what we're going to do now is, uh, yeah, I actually gained this guy, by the way, Georgie. I gained this guy from, uh, uh, where was it now? Mern, I believe it was. Yes, I think he was in Mern. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome as well. So he's leveled up really nicely. And I'm actually going to go over to the companion menu in just a second so I can show you. Otherwise, we're just going to be leveling up our new FCA Grenadier friends. And let's see, do we have anyone else? That ah, hello. Yes, this fellow as well. Yes, Vitali. He is the guy that I had in the prisoner's hold in Lipno. And I actually forgot about him. <laughs> Amusingly enough, I mean, it's me. I forget about things like that. And uh, yeah, upon returning there, obviously, to retake it, I persuaded him to join us because the developers have released a hotfix recently. And the hotfix has fixed the prisoner problem. So basically, the persuasion attempts will now be reset and all that wonderful stuff. So as you can see here, I actually do have another person here that I managed to take prisoner. And as you can see, there are attempts remaining here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to execute a couple of people because these guys are not going to sell for that much. I know it's a little bit cutthroat, but this is going to give us the greatest chance to get Constantine to join us. And let's do, let's, let's execute that guy. And then we can, I think we can just execute everyone. There we go. And then we can just persuade. There you go. Easy, easy, really, really nice. And now we have this guy who can actually join the Gobi squad and we can give him some uh, automatic weapons and things like that. We can give him some auto equips and oh yeah, yeah. Did you notice? Did you notice the UI has changed? So none of the buttons on the right here, you have the buttons on the left instead. I think that's actually really cool because this is right here. And obviously if you were going to bring up your stats of a particular unit, by the way, this guy is fantastic in terms of his sight range. Look at that. He's got a sight range of two, which is only beaten, I believe by snipers. So that's kind of crazy. Anyway, as I was saying, usually the buttons would be kind of here and you could still see all of them, but it would be kind of annoying to move your mouse over the screen all the time, right? Well, now it's not like that. Now the usability has been improved so dramatically. It's really nice. I mean, these small improvements, they may seem like they're small, but they're actually they're actually really good. They they give you a lot of a lot of uh, quality of life improvements. So, I think that's really nice. And uh, we have Anna walking around here as well, and uh, you'll be uh, actually quite thankful to know that our uh, our faction money is pretty good now, actually. I've been running around with a whole bunch of iron and things because obviously I've had a lot of iron being produced here and there, and I have been able to basically get them and take the iron over to where it's needed. And then as a result, I have been able to construct additional buildings. Now, someone has actually told me as well, by the way, that if you spawn units onto a building's roof or too near a building, then they're going to bug out and they won't be able to actually do anything. So that's obviously something to be a bit concerned about. But, eh, you know, I mean, you can you can pretty much avoid that, you know, pretty easily anyway. So actually going to just tell everyone to charge in right here and we'll be done in a jiffy. Oh, I actually spawned myself on on the top of a building. Ah, well, never mind. My troops will deal with it. You know, sometimes I partially think that just charging our units in like this is going to be one of the most effective ways of killing enemy units in this way. I don't know whether it's going to be as effective against someone like the Atov Federation, for example, because obviously these guys are just looters. And looters, as we know, are the, well, they are the lowest level of bandit in the game. And as a result, they're probably going to be very easy for our forces to eliminate, as you can see right there, done and dusted. But uh, I, I kind of think that the, the fast and quick nature of just running at our opponent with all of our units is just going to overpower them in no time at all. But obviously, if they are entrenched, for example, with federal machine gunners or something along those lines, then we're probably going to have a bit of problems. Anyway, what I've been doing is basically just getting hospitals, libraries, churches, parks, wheat farms, and so on and so forth, just building up our inf infrastructure as much as I can, and then going from there. So just spending as much time 
getting our buildings built, really, that's it, you know, and uh, just trying to do that as much as I can. Now, Lipno is under attack. I was actually going to make my way back there anyway, because I would like to attack Chinuvka and hopefully eliminate the VFA. And speaking of that, the CFR has not yet been eliminated as far as I'm aware. So I'm not entirely sure if I am going to need to eliminate the last remaining general. I, I'm not entirely sure whether that's necessary, but if it indeed is, then I have no idea where she is. Uh, it's going to be uh, a bit difficult. Oh, there we go. Faction money. We got our faction money. There we go. We've got 126,000. And don't be too happy about it because that money is going to disappear and evaporate in a second, as you can see right there. It literally just took 120,000 from us. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah, kind of crazy. Anyway, we have a number of pieces of wood here that I will be taking. I'll take some luxury wine as well because, I mean, just look at it. Oh my, that is just so crazy. And you can actually just go to the merchant here. If you need money, then luxury wine is a pretty fantastic way of doing it because as you can see, you can just do that. I can actually buy some flour here to kind of tide me over a little bit. And uh, uh, yes, okay, so I have to trade back some of the wine, unfortunately. But anyway, point is, Wine is really, really good because even if you take a town, it's probably going to have some way of producing wine in some way or another. And that is a pretty awesome way of getting some cash. You know, even if uh, even if you don't have that much money, you can basically just wait for the luxury wine and just defend your city as much as possible if needed. So what I'm actually going to do in a bit of a change of topic here is I think I'm going to buy the AWR and uh, we're actually going to be using that instead of the SR because even though, actually, you know what? Should I use an SVD instead? Because it's got 90 damage instead of 80, but this has a higher muzzle velocity. That's the main thing to be a bit concerned about. And the SVD does actually have more marksmanship skills, so I'm not entirely sure whether I should use that. But I actually wanted to show you... Mm, I wanted to show, I'm going to just use this and we'll see if that actually works out for us. So let's just sell a whole bunch of other stuff here just to try and reduce the amount of money that I'm going to have to pay. There you go. And uh, I actually wanted to show you at the black market. Where is the black market, by the way? Yeah, it, it tends to disappear and reappear at times now instead of it being constantly in, in you know particular places. So, ah, Lipno was already taken. That was extremely fast, wasn't it? That was really fast. It took a lot longer beforehand when I was making my way over here, but oh well. Zalaniv has now come under siege again, but I can't really... I can't really be expected to continue running around all over the place. There are no pirate camps over there, so I'm, I'm actually having no idea why there, why there are so many. But I suppose that's just how it is. Anyway, as you can see, Igor, Dimitro, and uh, Ivan are actually having a pretty decent amount of troops now. So what I can do uh, is I can actually tell them to go and do that. So as you can see, someone actually did tell me that the give troops quote unquote button is above the let's exchange prisoners button but as you can see i don't have that so i assume it's just literally because of my save game so when we start a new game we'll get all of those features implemented so you should probably not take my save game as a full representation of what is actually in the game because there are many many more things available to the player which is Obviously a shame that I can't show that at the moment, but uh, I'm kind of intrigued to, 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 you know, to actually see where we're going with this. And uh, maybe we can, maybe we can uh, do that at a later point. But anyway, let's have a look at Georgie right here. So I've actually given him a huge amount of tactic skill. Let's actually give him a couple more points in financial. And I'm going to give him more points in tactics like no one's business. He's actually level 11 now. So that's really nice because they can obviously level up past 10 now. So it might make sense for me to take some, some people and uh, put them back into my army for a second. But, uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully, our guys are going to be able to get over to Zalaniv and be able to defend there. But, yeah, I'm hoping for a black market to appear relatively soon. All right, so technically I can sneak... Okay, apparently I can't sneak in. I uh, I got captured. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is kind of interesting. That's never happened to me before. 
Oh, amazingly enough, we did get a... Uh, oh, really? Zalanif actually fell? Oh, yeah. Well, never mind. We gained some more faction money, as you can see right there. So hopefully our companions are going to use it relatively nicely. Lipno now has 30. So I guess I will be attacking. And we will just do the uh, blitz kind of attack here. And we will just try and get these guys dead as soon as possible. And uh, we'll see how we go. Alright, so I don't seem to be able to find any of the SR uh, sniper rifles. I guess that's what it stands for, SR, I don't know. But anyway, the point is, is that I can't really find any of them. I have swapped out my SCAR now for the other rifle. And uh, hopefully that will see us doing quite a bit of damage. I don't know whether that's actually going to happen, so we'll, we'll try it out. But uh, yeah, I basically needed to, uh, you know get some ammo for it before I could actually do anything with it. Anyway, I suppose what we're going to do is we're going to go straight on in to Chernivka here and try and eliminate the VFA. I don't know how good that's going to really happen. Let's face it, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I think we probably will do okay, but obviously these VFA units are very highly skilled. You know how damaging they can be. And uh, it's a bit worrying, perhaps. Maybe, maybe. Well, let's go in and see what we can do. We have 111 in faction, by the way, in faction money. So I'm actually kind of surprised that our forces are... Are they starting to get some more things? Yeah, I think they're starting to get some more things. So that's pretty good. Anyway, uh, I think what I'm going to do... What is his party size? What's his maximum party size? I can't actually tell. But Dimitro has 5 and he has 60. And uh, obviously Igor has 10, so he has 120. So he has 50, I guess. So let's give him another point in leadership. And I guess we'll give him uh, maybe some points in medical. Mm, maybe some marching speed. Eh, more financial, why not? Let's do that. Now, I'm thinking I'm actually going to be making him a uh, general relatively soon. So maybe we want to do that right now. Actually, where is he? Is he? He's in Antarctica squad, isn't he? Yeah, there he is. Okay, so we're gonna speak to him, and uh, we'll we'll try to. Uh, I don't know why he's using this. You can use my scar for the moment. <laughs> this is probably a bad idea because I'm giving him my scar, and I'm probably not gonna have any. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any backup weapon then, so who knows, who knows, maybe it's going to turn out really, really awfully, but I'm actually hoping that he is actually going to be a really, really good, uh, really good unit to have here, so I'm actually going to tell him to attack Zalaniv, and uh, we'll see if he can actually take that by himself. I hope he will be able to, if he's not able to, then that's just how it's going to have to be. Let's attack and see what we can do. So there are 95 in the garrison here. Obviously, I do not have my scar with me, so this might very well be a, an extreme failure of epic proportions, but you never know. Maybe we're going to be all right. Uh, he's actually joining me in this, Georgie, by the way. He actually seems to be joining me, which is not exactly what I intended, but it's okay. It's not a problem. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to have a little bit of assistance here and there. So let's actually tell our people to go along here, try and get to the flag, even though I personally feel like getting to the flag is kind of secondary for me right now. I don't think the whole flag taking thing is too necessary against the VFA. I think it's probably quite necessary against the Atoll Federation, but you never know. Ooh, we actually have a knight battle right here, so that means I get to use my wonderful... Oh, get to use my wonderful... Uh, night vision goggles. I was actually thinking that this would have a uh, scope, but apparently it does not have a scope. That's kind of interesting. I thought it would have one, but apparently it doesn't. Oh well. I, I suppose the SR would have probably had a scope. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So yes, at least now we have the uh, 4X scope on it. And uh, yes, because uh, I actually was told in the comments that the 6X scope, the 6 times zoom, is only available on certain sniper rifles and uh, I think the I think maybe the SVD probably has the uh, the six times zoom so maybe I should have bought that instead oh well never mind it's not really a big deal I suppose I mean this does have a doesn't this have a suppressor of some kind I think it might have a suppressor I think that's 
pretty fun. I mean, maybe it will affect how, you know, stealthy I can be. All right, now, obviously, I'm not entirely convinced about splitting your units up yet. Because, obviously, I uh, kind of want to utilize as many of my forces as possible, but you never know. Sometimes it is just necessary to do something like this. Hello. Oh, what? 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 What, what was that? Did you see that? That was actually a kill? That was actually an instant kill. That was an instant kill. I like this weapon. I like this weapon. Okay. That's kind of surprising to me. I really thought that I would not do too well with it. But I'm pretty happy with the uh, performance so far. And, uh, well, we'll see what we can do here. So, yeah, I am actually going to get shot multiple times here. I need to be very, very careful. Because, as we've seen, the VFA fighters can be extremely effective. And I am going to need to do something about these as well. So, let's actually tell these guys to actually start fighting here and we'll move these guys a little bit forward there we go I think I'm in a really bad position to be honest so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get behind maybe like around here whoa 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 whoa, whoa. okay hello hello okay yes let me not do that let me just let me just heal myself for a second yes I probably should have tried out a new weapon against a slightly easier enemy perhaps Oh, nice. Oh, 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 okay. Yes, okay, this weapon is fantastic. This is a really nice weapon. I can only imagine how good the SR was, because obviously I can't find it anymore, but that is kind of crazy. Wow. That's... I, I gotta say, that's... I think that's pretty amazing. I'm actually almost dead, but I'm not noticing because I am just so shocked at how effective this weapon is. Anyway, let's tell our people to charge in. Actually, not charge, but you know what I mean. Go in and uh, see if we can take that flag, perhaps. Maybe we can go around the side here and maybe take that other flag. But it's highly unlikely. I mean, the enemy has 62 units still. And I am probably going to get myself killed very, very quickly here. Hello. Okay, so they don't die in one hit from a body shot. They do die in one hit from a headshot, of course. You would expect that to be the case. There we go. I really wish I had a, 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 a much bigger zoom. I need a much, much bigger zoom because it is very very difficult to make this work the way it is hmm that maybe you know that maybe makes me think that I should go for the SVD because maybe the SVD has a relatively higher zoom level while still being pretty good you know while still being pretty usable and everything because obviously at the moment we don't really have anything extremely usable is using a four, four times zoom, you know, I mean, the four, four times zoom is perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, it is perfectly fine, but it is difficult to use at long range. There we go. Alright, not too bad. I, I am big, I'm a big fan of sniper rifles in general, I'm just really, really, yes, really, really bad with them. Anyway, let's engage without me, I don't think we're going to have too many difficulties in actually eliminating the last remaining forces, and there's did they... Did, wait a minute. Did the devs change how many credits you get for massive amounts of units? Because if they did, bravo. Oh yes, I am applauding. I am applauding right now because look at the experience gain. Look at the credits. We are being rewarded like no one's business for doing a massive siege. And that's exactly what I was talking about in a previous episode. I think that that's a fantastic way to go about it because obviously if you do a big siege, if you do something that is risky, you know, then you expect to be rewarded, right? Well, there you go. We're actually getting rewarded really, really nicely here. I'm actually gonna get rid of a little bit of wood as well, even though it pains me to do so. But these helmets are very expensive and they're very, very good to sell. So there you go. All right, so let's imprison one of these VFA fighters as well. I think we're going we're going pretty well so far. They have declared war against us, but I actually don't mind too much 
because we have eliminated all of their towns, technically. So it really depends on what is going to happen now. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. It really, as I say, really depends. So what we're going to do now, because I have 268,000, we are going to go and speak to some militia units. And we're just going to basically hire as many cheaper units as I can get my hands on. And then we are going to make some new squads. And this is basically what I've been doing now. So I've just been doing auto group up, auto equip and just reward. Auto group up, auto equip and just reward. And we can actually do another one as well because I have enough units to be able to deal with that. So let's do this and we will level them up too. Wow, those guys leveled up like no one's business. And let's give them a little bit more good stuff, a little bit more uh, good equipment and things like that. So now we can put all these guys into the garrison almost instantly. So we have 19 of them, which is really nice, even though that's probably not going to stop anyone wanting to attack us, but that's just how it's going to have to be. And we'll build an airport here almost immediately. I think that's a good idea. All right. So what else can we do here? Well, we could sell some prisoners. I think I am going to be selling everyone else apart from the VFA fighter who I will try to persuade. There we go. Oh, it's so nice to be able to persuade units again to join you. It's really, really cool. And uh, I guess she'll join Antarctica. Why not? It sounds like a good plan to me. And we'll equip her as well. Because she's already level 7, so that's really nice too. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're wondering where the renaming button is, don't worry, it's here. Do you see this? Look at that. That is so slick in my opinion as well. That's that's really nice. Anyway, uh, let's have a look. Uh, do I have to worry? Do I have to worry about any of these people attempting to attack me? I'm not entirely sure. Let's wait at the hotel for a little bit of time. We gained some more faction money, so I'm hopeful that... My forces, my generals will now start recruiting units and uh, hopefully going out and, and being very effective indeed. As you can see, Demetro is doing pretty well here and uh, oh yeah, they, these guys have leveled up as well. Ooh, this guy, what? This guy's fantastic. He's already level 10 and he's got six in leadership, six tactics, five in financial and six in city management. What a crazy guy. Wow. That that is actually really crazy. I am uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked. Whoa, this guy's even better. He has ten in tactics, and I haven't even specced him yet. Wow, that's actually kind of crazy. Let's give him a whole bunch of financial, a whole bunch of marching speed, and we'll give him a little bit of medical as well because he already has some insane stuff. Let's talk to him. Form your own army, please. You are a beast. Wow, what a beast. Okay, so let's uh, let's tell him to attack Z uh, Zalaniv, I guess. Why not? Let's tell him to do that. And this guy can actually go off and do things as well. So why not? Let's tell him to form his own army too. And we should probably tell him to... Mm, I'm worried about this. Let's, let's tell him to guard Chenivka, actually, because we're very close by to it. So he's going to obviously help us out quite a bit. And obviously Georgie is injured, which is unfortunate. I really didn't want him to get injured, but that's just what happens sometimes. And hopefully we won't be attacked by these guys too much. Or at least I hope not. And do we have any people that actually leveled up in that, uh, in that particular? Yeah, we do loads actually. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Okay. So I don't think anyone else actually leveled up. I think everyone else is like level 15 already. So not particularly necessary. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so let's go into the marketplace here real quick because obviously, ah, yes, obviously this one doesn't have an SVD. Ah. Now, there is an AK, uh, AKM-74, which I think I am actually going to buy because I would like to use that weapon again because I'm obviously not using a SCAR anymore, which, I mean, obviously doesn't make sense because I'm using a different type of ammo. I'm not using 5.56 millimeter anymore. I'm using uh, 7.62 millimeter. So obviously it is pointless for me to use that. So yeah, anyway. Oh, the merchant doesn't have enough money. Are you serious? Okay, fine. Take this. There you go. Now you have enough. Oh, I see. Okay, I've given too much. Great. I guess I'll just take that then and just sell one of these. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Not. <laughs> All right, so yeah, anyway, armor, mm, still still wearing some pretty decent armor. Let's sell that. Do I have enough food? No, I do not. Let's let's get uh, let's get on that right away. Let's get some food. 
buy some flour as well, sell this, and there we have it. Okay, that's pretty nice. So what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to be using the AKM for close range combat. So I'm going to give it a red dot. And I will take off the AWR. The SVD actually uses the exact same weapon as... Uh, exact same weapon. The exact same ammo as the AWR, which is actually really cool. So I don't need to worry about that too much. I'm actually going to continue improving leadership here. And we're also going to continue improving my throwing weapon proficiency. As you can see, rifles are now at 100, which is pretty insane. Actually, maybe I should improve my pistols. Should I improve my pistols? Let's improve pistols, just in case, because I obviously do have a secondary weapon in the form of a pistol. So let's go over to Gorinka. Hopefully it's going to be relatively well defended, and hopefully Zalaniv will be taken back relatively soon from, well, by our forces, maybe. Uh, not entirely sure if that will happen. Let's buy the SVD now. That is 14,000. We can trade some things for it. Trade some of these vests. There we go. All right. That is pretty good. So let's put that on here. And now, obviously, this has a six time zoom, I'm pretty sure. So I don't really need to worry about it any further. And we can actually, well, uh, snipe some guys, you know, we could snipe some guys relatively well. Okay, so my faction money is actually not going down any further, which I'm a bit surprised at. Not entirely sure why it was being uh, consumed so incredibly quickly before. Now, what's actually happening here? Ah, this is a VFA general. I might actually want to attack her to hopefully eliminate her from the game, if at all possible, because obviously if there are generals still roaming around, then I think the faction still counts as being, quote-unquote, alive. So obviously that's definitely something that we want to try and stop as soon as possible. But uh, something that I'm not really wanting to do is overwhelm them with forces, I don't really want to overwhelm them with huge amounts of units, so I'm going to try and just snipe myself. Ooh, that is a big scope. That is a big scope right there. Look at that. What a crazy scope that is. What? What is that? That is crazy. Okay. So hopefully I'll be able to... Ooh, okay. Scary. <laughs> that was scary. Okay, so yeah, let me... Uh, let me see what I can do here. Hello, anyone... Uh... I don't even know where to aim with this. I guess uh, I guess I, I kind of do know. I've never been a real big fan of the uh, SVD style of rifle in games. I like all kinds of other rifles, like AKs and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about assault rifles and bolt action and, and you know semi-automatic and all that sort of thing. But yeah, anyway, I think I'm gonna have to change the sensitivity as well. But there's a quick 14,000 for us and we can take some food why not let's take some more food and we can now imprison her which is rather nice too because that means that she can become a general of ours and i'm very very pleased about that so let's try and persuade her propaganda propaganda and there she is okay so she's actually level seven and i guess we'll put we'll put her with the gobi squad why not I think she looks actually really cool too so we need to get her a helmet i think she really needs a helmet we don't want her to get headshot do we not at all all right so bresno is here where oh there's there's zalaniv okay so i'm actually going to go back over to zalaniv because i would like to see what's actually going on there ivan what are you doing you're returning to drobin are you okay apparently he's returning to drobin well good for you i suppose pirates are running around like no one's business, and there you go, we've actually received even more money for our faction, and I'm not entirely sure why people aren't using it now. Well, I guess, oh, <gasps> are they attacking it? I think they're actually attacking it. Oh, I love these guys. You know when you try and, you know, when you try and suggest to a, a vassal in Mountain Blade, for example, that you want them to take something, and then they're like, I will consider it. And in this in this game, no. They just go and do it straight away. I really like that. That's nice. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my leadership once again because apparently I leveled up again, which is actually kind of surprising. And now we have five in command, prisoner management, and instructor, which is even better. So let's start increasing my pistol skill as well. And I'm actually just going to speed things up a little bit. You can speed things up in the game by holding Y on the keyboard as well. If you want to speed them up by, I think, 
double the speed or three times the speed or something like that. But if you want it to go normally like this, then you just hold space. So there's a little bit of uh, shortcut, a shortcut tip for you, I guess, a little bit anyway. And uh, yeah, my faction money's not going down now, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that. But hopefully they are going to be. Are they are they actually taking this or, or what is actually going on here? Oh, this six time zoom is really nice. Boom. Yay. Okay, I actually killed someone with it. Uh, this is actually an amazing rifle, but it does have a huge amount of recoil. Obviously, it's going to. And I mean, it's not bolt action or anything like that. So you can technically, if you are good enough, you can try to control the recoil as much as you can. And then you can fire in quick succession. But obviously, that is relatively difficult. So yeah, we're just gonna be storming at these guys, killing them pretty, really, pretty, pretty fast. And uh, I have changed my sensitivity on the six times zoom now as well. So yeah, this rifle's pretty cool. I, I think that the six times zoom is kind of necessary. I think it, I think it really helps out quite a bit. And there you go, <laughs> only six thousand for that because let's face it, they were, yeah, they were just looters. But anyway, we can imprison all those guys too. And uh, yeah, now Zalaniv is ripe for the taking. I hope that they will decide to take it. Igor, what are you doing? What is he actually doing? Let me let me see what he actually defend target. Well, I actually don't want him to defend, if at all possible. Uh, ah, cancellation of assistance. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to tell him to assist anymore. So we're going to tell him to attack a city and we'll tell him to attack Zalaniv. And then maybe he will actually do that now. I think that would be pretty cool. And Oksana has actually leveled up, which is crazy. Wow. She has seven skills, uh, seven skill points even. So let's go for six in leadership. We'll go for six in tactics and then a little bit in financial. Obviously, she's going to continue to level up and uh, then we'll see what she's going to decide to do. But yeah, I am looking forward to seeing what we're able to do against the... Uh, well, if nothing happens here with my guys, then I'm just going to take Zalaniv myself. And then we will go over and we will try our newfound might against the Atoll Federation. Because as you can see, we've obviously eliminated the CFR and we have eliminated the VFA, even though it does not say that. Ah, they both have generals, as you can see. They both have generals still remaining. I don't know where they are, so that's probably a bit of a problem, but... Maybe I can attempt to find them as well, or maybe I'll just be lucky and run into them at some point. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, well, and I will see you next time.